eyes. Today, I want to share with you some insider tips that have totally transformed the way I create art, within minutes. These are tips I wish I'd have told my younger self and would have saved myself months of hard work. Let's begin. When I was younger, I used to make the mistake of working on one region of my painting at a time. If this is your approach too, then chances are, you have unknowingly taken your eyes off of the big picture. You might end up with a painting which is inconsistent in many aspects such as proportions, values, and the overall style appeal. Let me suggest an alternative. In the bricklayer's method, you divide your art process into many levels on the basis of the darkness of your brush used. For the first level, what I personally do is restrict myself with a large mid-tone brush. Using the exact same brush throughout, I lay in the entire silhouette of the figure and add basic forms. I try to pay close attention to everything everywhere all at once, and how the various shapes blend into each other. That's why you'll find me going from place to place and not caring about which individual part I'm drawing, but rather the level which I am working on. This mindset is not difficult to get. Note that the size of my brush remains the same within each initial level such as these, the line work, the gray tones, the dark tones, the highlights, and so on. Only once I am finished with the initial level, am I allowed to move on to the next level and change the size, opacity, darkness, and type of brush used. Thus, I automatically follow the bricklayer's method. And you can too. Chapter 2. According to this, I must never spend more than 30 seconds in any one part of my painting. I mentally divide the whole canvas into smaller regions and focal points which are as follows, the hair, the forehead, the eyes and wrinkles below the eyes, nose, cheek, you get the drill. While drawing them, I try never to get stuck at one place for too long. That's why you'll never find me zooming into the canvas. If I end up zooming into it, I would sweat over the small details and inevitably try to perfect it at the beginning only and because I haven't yet discovered what the composition of the big picture is yet, I'll end up with a result which is not consistent with the overall form. That's why I keep all this zooming in for the final touching up level, in which I would actually zoom into these focal points and work tirelessly down to every minute brush stroke. There's a time for everything, am I right? So the next time you feel like a few strokes for the eye aren't enough for that initial level, just move on. Being in a constant hurry is okay sometimes. As long as you you run from one place to another, it'll give you a fresh perspective every time. This helps identify mistakes which your otherwise habituated eyes may have overlooked in the big picture. Speaking of the habituated eye, we all have a bad habit of getting used to how our painting looks like and being unable to point out the mistakes ourselves. You might have felt that once you revisit an old artwork after a long time, you are suddenly painfully aware of all the places you went wrong. Here's a trick which might help correcting your mistakes in the present only. Every once in a while, I suggest you flip the canvas horizontally and vertically to start afresh. Moreover, you should squint your eyes every once in a while, in order to focus not on the shapes, but on the blacks and whites and how they are placed on the canvas, which determines the abstract quality of your art. Most of us actually are brilliant critics of ourselves, but we often fail to utilize our untapped potential. Chapter 3. Be unafraid of change. 
Don't attach yourself to certain brush strokes that look perfect to you. If you do, you'll start being afraid of ruining your art by making changes. Learn to accept that change is an inherent process of all artworks and without it, without making some crazy changes here and there, you can't be creative, especially if you're unconsciously overthinking on an expected outcome. However, that's perfectly natural. After all, there's a reason great artists and writers often have contrarian work habits like smoking or doing drugs. It's because it takes the edge off of their overthinking, making them cruel and indifferent to their previous brushstrokes, and instead going only on autopilot. But for that I need some serious intuition though. Why not stick to Spotify for now? Chapter 4 Shapes, Shapes, Shapes It's everything in art. Think for a moment how these shapes tell a story. For more, check out Marco Gucci's video on this topic which is available free of cost on YouTube, but takes the concept on a whole new level. Before watching his stuff, I was just scribbling aimlessly. Every set of brush strokes create a new shape. And every set of shapes decides the art style. Therefore, you must make every minute shape contribute to the general vibe of the painting, and such that brush strokes don't stand out as accidental abnormalities. That's why I spent over 10 minutes drawing and redrawing the chin to figure out the best art style which suits the big picture. Each strand of hair has this indescribable quality which I try to emulate uniformly throughout the painting. Individually, these strands don't stand a chance, but as we like to say unity is strength. Our takeaway is that consistency is the primary focus when it comes to shapes, and shapes give birth to our art style. Chapter 5. Invent random rules for unrealism. These rules enable you to fluently speak the language of shapes on your canvas. For example, in this painting, I've imposed a rule that the person is formed of only small blocky shapes which overlap and play around among themselves. To follow this, I used the same exact brush throughout and nothing else. I went so far as to never use an eraser too. These rules may not always be easy to follow and might simply seem like an O.C.D on my part. Trust me on this one, they really do bring out the creative professionalism. Like someone once said, limitation breeds creativity. Many random rules are much more sneaky and subtle which only the artist themselves knows. A rule in this painting is that all the shadows will be sort of blending into one great and final shape, and a sort of glow will get created at places where I've used grey white brush strokes. It doesn't quite happen in real life, but looks brilliant on canvas. Note that I decreased the opacity of my brush and to use it for this purpose, thereby avoiding the blender tools and airbrushes. Hence, sticking to the initial rule. You can invent your own art style by sticking to a well-defined set of rules pertaining to the composition, values, color schemes, edges, planes, simplification of anatomy, and so on. Chapter 6. The Illusion of Detail If you set out to define all the creaks and crevices of your painting, not only will this take time, it will defeat the purpose of creativity in simplicity. On the other hand, you also don't want your artworks to look like you haven't put any effort at all when it comes to finer details like hair, skin texture, etc. What we need is a fine balance between detailing and simplicity. 
This balance stems out of your art style or the set of random rules as discussed in Chapter 5. Here, for instance, I pointed out just a few lines of chin hair right along the edges and kept it at that. I included more details here and there, but made sure to keep it simple for the most part and follow my gut instinct. So guys, this is it. This is where the narration ends and our paths diverge once again. To revise our discussion, find the written summary of all that we learned today at my website, which I'll link in the description box of this video. Farewell, until next time, fellow internet traveler.